All right, we're talking about solving equations with square roots, and we'll just work through some examples in this video of the techniques that we've looked at for solving equations. And here's our first example. x squared equals 225. And this is real simple. And the point here is that if the variable we're trying to find is squared, we can often solve it just by square rooting it. And the idea is that in algebra, you can do anything you want to do to an equation as long as you do the same thing to each side. So we square root each side, and the square root of x squared is just x, and then the square root of 225 we write plus or minus 15. And don't forget the little plus or minus right there. So that one's easy. x is plus or minus 15. And when you have the variable that you're trying to find that is squared, it's very common to have two answers, and this represents both answers there. Plus 15 or positive 15 is one answer, and negative 15 is, is the other. Okay, our next example is 4x squared minus 100 equals 0. Okay, the easiest way to solve this is to transpose the 100 here, put it over on the other side, and it becomes positive. Or in other words, add 100 to each side. So we get 4x squared equals 100. And then to isolate x, to solve for x, we need to get rid of this 4. And the 4 is multiplied, so we need to divide by 4. Which means, of course, we need to divide by 4 on the other side. And those 4's cancel out, leaving us with x squared equals 25. And then we solve it by taking the square root of each side. And on the left, the square root of x squared is just x. And on the right, the square root of 25 is plus or minus 5. And again, don't forget the little plus or minus. OK, here's another example. 9y squared equals 16. OK, we're trying to find y. So we need to isolate y, which means we need to get rid of the 9. And we do that by dividing by 9. And that leaves us with y squared equals 16, or excuse me, yeah, yeah, y squared is 16 over 9. Yeah, that's right. And then we can take the square root of each side. And you don't even have to write these radical signs. You just can recognize that square rooting the left side will give you y, and square rooting the right side will give you the square root of each of those. 16 square rooted is 4, and 9 square rooted is 3. And don't forget the plus or minus. Y is plus or minus 4 thirds. And another example, 9x squared equals 12.96. Okay, let's divide. And this one actually does work out pretty nicely. Let's divide both sides by 9. And the 9's cancel there. And you get x squared is... 12.96 over 9, that works out to 1.44 exactly. And so then, so we, I'll just write this, x squared is 1.44. So if I square root both sides, x is the square root of 1.44. Or x is really plus or minus the square root of 1.44. And you might be thinking, how do we simplify that? Well. 1.44 is the same thing as 144 over 100. So let's write it that way. That's the square root of 144 over 100, like that. And we can work with that. 144 and 100 are both perfect squares. So this is plus or minus. And let's just square root each of these. The 144 square rooted is a 12. And the 10 square rooted, square rooted is, I'm sorry, the 100 square rooted is a 10. So we get 12 over 10, plus or minus 12 over 10. And you could simplify that to plus or minus 6 fifths, or write it as a decimal, plus or minus 1.2. And your teacher might tell you to leave your answer as a fraction or leave it as a decimal. Um, so do what you're told to do if, if, you're spec if it's specified in the problem. But, but those are both the correct answer is mathematically equivalent. And note that there are two answers, positive 6 fifths and negative 6 fifths. Or if you want to write it that way, positive 1.2 and negative 1.2.
Now the answers don't always work out so nicely. So let's look at this example. 14x squared equals 3.8. So let's divide this. Uh, to, find, to isolate the x squared, let's divide both sides by 14. And the x squared, the 14 cancels, leaving us with x squared. The x squared is 3.8 over 14. And so let's figure this out. 3.8 divided by 14 is 0.2714285 and that, that actually is a repeating decimal 0 0.2714587147 uh, 714285 excuse me anyway that repeats there's a pattern that repeats there on and on I'm just gonna round it to 0 0.2714 that so that's approximately equal to 0 0.2714 and then I'll square root both sides so x is plus or minus the square root of 0 0.2714 So let's actually do this. On the calculator, we hit second and the square key to get the square root, and I'll put in 0.2714. Let me fix that. Square root of 0.2714, and I get hit enter, and it's about 0.521. So I'll write that as plus or minus 0.521. And I'll show you a little bit better to wait, a little bit better way to do that on these calculators. Um, we can do, do go back to the 3.8 divided by 14, and instead of rounding that number, the calculator has stored that answer in its memory to as many decimal places as it can. So we rounded it to 0.2714, but if we want to take the square root of that, we can hit square root, and then hit the second and the answer key. And it, when it says answer there, it means the answer to the previous problem that was done on the calculator. And the, the problem right before that, that's the answer that you see there, 0.2714285714. It's going to use that number with all the accuracy that it can, and it gives us an answer. It still rounds to 0.521, but the other digits would be a little bit more accurate. So if, if you needed more accuracy, it's better to use the calculator to its potential there. And also a little bit quicker that way, too. So that's our answer, plus or minus 0.521.